In this video, I will explain how to find the consumer surplus, producer surplus, and deadweight loss in a monopoly market. So let's jump into an example that says, a monopoly faces an inverse market demand of P, the price, is equal to 140 minus 2Q, where Q is the quantity. The monopoly has a marginal cost function of MC, the marginal cost, is equal to 20 plus 2Q, again, where Q is the quantity produced. Find the profit maximizing quantity and price, then find the consumer surplus, producer surplus, and deadweight loss. So to start with, let's find the profit maximizing quantity and price for this monopoly. So it's important to understand that the monopoly will maximize their profit when the marginal revenue is equal to the marginal cost. So let's start with, let's find the revenue function. So revenue, that's calculated as price times quantity. Now we're told that price is this function right here. So we can plug this in for P. So let's go ahead and do that. So we would get 140 minus 2Q. So this is our price times quantity. So let's go ahead and distribute this Q into these parentheses right here. So we'll get 140Q minus 2Q squared. So now we need to find the marginal revenue. So the marginal revenue, that's going to be equal to the derivative of the revenue function with respect to Q, the quantity. So we need to find the derivative of this function. So that would be 140 minus, remember the power rule in calculus, take the exponent and multiply it by the coefficient. So two times two is four, and then reduce the exponent by one. So we end up with four Q. So here's our marginal revenue function. Now we need to set this equal to our marginal cost function, and we'll be able to solve for Q. So we know the marginal cost function. So we'll say marginal revenue 140 minus four Q set that equal to 20 plus 2q and solve for q. So if we add a 4q to both sides, and if we subtract a 20 from both sides, we end up with 120 is equal to 6q. To solve for q, we can divide both sides by 6, and we end up with 120 divided by 6, that's 20, is equal to q. So the monopoly will maximize their profit when they produce 20 units. Now, when they produce 20 units, what will their price be? Well, to figure that out, all we have to do is plug in a 20 into this price function right here. So we would find that P is equal to 140 minus 2 times 20. So we would get 140 minus 2 times 20 is 40. 140 minus 40 is 100. So the monopoly will maximize their profit when they produce Q is equal to 20 units and they charge $100 per unit. Now, when this occurs, we also want to find what is the consumer surplus, producer surplus, and deadweight loss. So to figure that out, it helps if we can draw a graph. So I'll clear a little bit of space right here. Okay, so let's say that we create a graph in which the y-axis is the price and the x-axis of the graph is the quantity, Q. What we can do is we can graph these three lines, the marginal cost, the marginal revenue, and the inverse market demand function. And once we graph these three lines, we'll be able to find consumer surplus, producer surplus, and deadweight loss. So let's start by graphing the marginal cost line. So for this line, we can see that if we plugged in a value of zero for the quantity right here, the marginal cost would be equal to 20. So on our graph, if Q was equal to zero, that's the point right here, we can see that marginal cost would be 20. So that's right about here. So our y-intercept is 20, in other words. And if this equation represents a line, what we can say is that 20, that's our y-intercept, and two is the slope of the line. So remember, slope is rise over run. So this two says that go up two and then over one, up two over one. So we're going to see that our marginal cost line is going to be something like this. So it's upward sloping, so let's label that. That's our marginal cost line. Then we can graph our marginal revenue line. So remember this equation, this was the derivative of the revenue function, which we just found. So for this equation, the y-intercept would be 140. So let's say that's all the way up here somewhere, 140. Now to graph this line, it helps if we can figure out what is the x-intercept of this line. Well, all we have to do to figure that out is set this value equal to zero and solve for q. So if we had zero is equal to 140 minus 4q, we can add a 4q to this left-hand side, which is equal to 140. And then to solve for q, we divide by four. So q would be equal to 140 divided by four. That turns out to be 35. So at 35, right about here, let's say, this is where the marginal revenue line will intersect the x-axis. So let's go ahead and draw that line. So something like this. So this is our marginal revenue line. And lastly, we need to graph our inverse market demand function. 
So again, to graph this one, if we imagine that Q is equal to zero, so when quantity is equal to zero, we can see that P, the price would be 140. So the Y intercept would also be right here at 140. But the slope of this line is negative two. So again, to figure out where the X intercept is, where the inverse market demand function crosses this X axis, all we have to do is set this left-hand side equal to zero and solve for Q. So we would have zero is equal to 140 minus two Q. If we added 2q to the left-hand side, we get 2q is equal to 140. And to solve for q, we just divide both sides by 2. So we find that q is equal to 140 divided by 2 is 70. So this point right here, where the inverse market demand function crosses the x-axis, is at 70. So let's go ahead and draw that line as well. So something like this. And this is actually our demand function. So what we'll notice is that the marginal revenue function has a slope that is twice as steep as the demand curve. So earlier we said that the monopoly could maximize their profit when they produced Q is equal to 20 units of goods. And we saw that at that value, the P price would be $100. So let's go ahead and mark that point on the graph as well. So Q of 20, let's say that's right about here. And a price of $100, that's right about here. So this point right here on the demand curve. So 100. Now let's start by finding the consumer surplus. So the consumer surplus is going to be this triangle right here. It represents the area under the demand curve, but greater than the market price, all the way up to the market quantity. So what we'll notice is that this area is just a triangle. And to find the area of a triangle, we can use the formula 1 half times base times height. So let's say CS, the consumer surplus, is equal to 1 half times the base, let's say the base is this length right here. So that's from a quantity of zero to a quantity of 20. So that's just 20 times the height. So the height would be this distance right here, which is the difference between 140 and 100, which is just 40. So the consumer surplus would be one half times 20, which is 10. So 10 times 40, that's 400. So the consumer surplus is $400. Okay, next we can find the producer surplus. So that is going to be the area above the marginal cost curve, but below the market price, all the way up to the market quantity of 20. So it's going to be this odd looking figure right here. So we'd need to figure out what the area of this figure is. So it helps if we break it down into two individual figures. So if we notice that there is a rectangle right here and a triangle right here, we can find the area of the rectangle and add it to the area of the triangle to get our producer surplus. So notice that there's one value that's missing. At a quantity of 20 right here, what is this price? So to figure that out, all we have to do is plug in a 20 into our marginal cost curve. So if we do that, if we plug in a 20 into our marginal cost curve, that's two times 20, which is 40, plus 20, which is 60. So at a quantity of 20, this price would be 60. So now what we can say is, let's write producer surplus is equal to the area of this rectangle, that's just going to be the base times the height. So this distance right here, the height, that's 100 minus 60, which is 40. So we'll say 40 times the base right here, that's a distance from zero to a quantity of 20. So that's just a distance of 20. So 40 times 20, that's the area of the rectangle. And to that, we have to add the area of this triangle down here. So again, we have one half times base, let's call the base this distance right here. So from a quantity of zero to 20, that's also 20 times the height. So the height is the distance from 60 to 20, which is 40. So we get 40 times 20 is 800 plus one half times 20, that's 10 times 40 is 400. So 800 plus 400, that's 1200. So our producer surplus is $1,200. And lastly, we want to calculate our dead weight loss. So that's going to be this triangle right here. So we need to find the area of this triangle. So to calculate the dead weight loss, there is one value we're missing, and it's this value right here, this point, which notice this is where the marginal cost curve intersects the demand curve. So let's figure out where those two intersect. So the way that we do that is we just set them equal to each other. So we'll set the marginal cost curve equal to this inverse market demand curve. So we'll say 20 plus 2Q is equal to 140 minus 2Q. And let's solve for Q. So let's figure out what that quantity is. So if we add a 2Q to both sides, we get 4Q is equal to, if we subtract a 20 from both sides, we have 140 minus 20, which is 120. Divide both sides by 4 to solve for Q. And we find that Q is equal to 30. So at this point right here, Q, this is a value of 30. 
So now we have everything we need to figure out the deadweight loss. So let's write that. The deadweight loss, I'll abbreviate as DWL, is going to be the area of this triangle. So that's one half times the base. So the base is the distance between 20 and 30, which is just 10, times the height of this triangle. So the height, that difference is 100 minus 60, which is 40. So we get one half times 10, that's five. Five times 40 is 200. So the deadweight loss is $200. So that is the process you can use to find consumer surplus, producer surplus, and deadweight loss in a monopoly market.